Hey, uh, so uh, just carrying on uh, doing uh, reviews of uh, my markers. Uh, we're going to do uh, the second one that I uh, purchased out of the four. Um, so uh, this is after the Dangerous Power G3. Uh, I got tired of uh, having to deal with a corky gun, and I just wanted a gun that I could just go out and play with. Uh, not have to worry about maintenance or anything like that. Something I could just go play with, put in the gear bag, and then take it back out and play with it. And I had to fiddle with it. Um, and I kind of did some searching um, at the time. This gun, as you can see right here, um, this gun was purchased on Craigslist, uh, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, it, at the time it was a little bit more acceptable to use that. Not saying it's unacceptable now, but that's what some of the paintball people used. And uh, also, you know, um, some other things, but it was before Facebook got really popular and stuff like that. Um, I was looking at a few guns. Um, I was in contact with somebody with like an angel at the time, but it ended up not working out. Um, I was looking at some proto rails, but I didn't want another spool valve gun because I just had a bad experience with one. Not saying spool valve guns are bad, I just wanted something towards the poppet side. And uh, this kind of like uh, pushed my, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of money at the time. Uh, I was a little bit, I was quite a bit younger than I am now when I purchased this. I've had this marker for a while. Um, so I just wanted uh, kind of a, like a poppet style gun, something that was easy to maintain. And I ended up picking up a Planet Eclipse E-Tech 4. Um, yeah, so uh, a little bit about the Planet Eclipse uh, E-Tech 4. Um, this was around 2012 when I picked this one up. This one's the LT, not the AM. The LT stands for light, the, uh, the AM stands for all metal. So this is uh, the LT one, which pretty much means it has a composite frame, a glass nylon, and a composite feed neck, and a composite on-off knob right there. And the eye covers are plastic too. Um, but yeah, just a little bit about this marker. It's a poppet evidently from Plain Eclipse, E-Tech 4. Um, features of this gun, it has a LED screen, not an OLED LED, uh, I wish I had a batteries in this, but it has lights that light up right here. Um, it's a poppet valve gun, of course, got a uh, lever locking feed neck, um, you got to use Allen keys to kind of fine tune it. Um, yeah, so just kind of get into it. Um, about the gun, uh, the barrel, let's go with the barrel first, uh, the barrel uses the shaft 4. Um, it does come with a fairly big bore, like a 6.9 bore, and it's pretty big. Um, I opted it out with a 6.85 for modern day. And the cool thing about this is uh, some people don't like the shaft bore barrels. Um, they are reverse threads, so you, you know, righty, loosey, lefty, tidy. <laughs> so it's a bit weird, but it keeps you from, like, uh, torquing the barrel down and... Uh, you know, not able to get it off, or when you tighten the barrel, this won't come unscrewed, stuff like that. Or when you loosen the barrel, it won't, you know, vice versa. Um, but yeah, the barrel, it's decent. Um, the shaft four, you know, you can change them out, which I like a lot. Um, this one's got some more milling compared to the stock one. The stock one's right here. Stock one isn't really fancy. Um, you know, it's no milling at all, and this one has some milling in it. Makes it a little bit easier in the eyes. Um, yeah, it's a heavy barrel. It's not the heaviest, but it's not light like carbon fiber. Uh, you know, then you got the barrel tip. Uh, this uh, E-Tech 4 is the Titan White uh, Anno, or print, you'll say. Uh, I'll say it's print, not Anno. Uh, but yeah, um, the, or the, the print's okay. It's kind of faded in some spots. I don't know if other people have the issues, but it still looks really cool and unique. Um, the gun itself... Um, this gun to start out with, uh, just like any E-Tech or Ego, at that matter, it's super reliable, and that's what you're what you're paying for playing an Eclipse. Um, by any means, it's not an Ego, but it's close. I would compare this to like a 08, maybe saying 09 Ego. Um, the solenoid's different, but just like what it has in it, it has the SL3 uh, LPR and the SL3. Uh, high pressure rag and it has a zip 2 kit in it so uh, it's supposed to kind of quiet the gun slow it down a little bit uh, I don't know how well that works so we're gonna go into that um, but yeah uh, the clamping feed nets okay uh, something that kind of sucks about it though is uh, it's not the lowest 
it, it, since it's plastic, it's completely fine. It'll definitely hold onto your lo loader just fine. You won't have any issues with that. Um, it sits up a little bit high. Um, you can see they're a little bit higher than the Dangerous Power G3. And also my, uh, my uh, gun that I'm going to do later over, I can go over it with you, with you guys, you know, later on, what I use mostly. Um, but the marker itself, like I said, uh, what's annoying about the feed neck uh, is you don't have that little wheel. So a lot of people, uh, and I should probably purchase it too, a uh, little wheel here so you can fine tune the, how the clamping feed neck uh, clamps down. It's a little annoying having to use a tool. Um, that's just my opinion. It's not like the worst case scenario, but uh, it would be nice if they had the wheel included. You can purchase it for it though. Um, I haven't yet. It's not that much money. It's only like six bucks. Um, it does have a macro line. Uh, you know, that day when I purchased it, it was acceptable. I still think it's acceptable. If you grew up playing with guns with macro lines, you're not going to have an issue. Um, if you grew up with guns, shooting guns that didn't come with a macro line, you might have an issue. I can't speak for that. Um, you know, when I play with a gun that doesn't have a macro, or if it does, it doesn't bother me. I've grown up knowing that this is here. And when it's gone, you know, I have no other difference. Uh, some people, it bothers me. Not really. I can still switch hands just fine. No issues there. Um, it does have a cure bolt on it. One of the first ones. So it has a little slot in there. So it doesn't, like, chop or you know damage the paintball that's coming after and also you probably definitely can't see down in there but it has a little wedge in there that kind of oh let's say let's see what side it is so I can better explain it it's on this side so it has a wedge in there where the balls just don't go straight down there it kind of hits it and then goes off to the side so it doesn't like cause the ball stack to put too much pressure where it'll damage the ball that's coming after the ball that's being fired um, and this is slightly offset when you set it in there too. There's a little cut in the face of the bolt as you can see Yeah, you can see like the face of the bolt there um, The cool thing about lining up the bolt There's a little dot on it that you can line it up so you can put it right on the ram So you don't have that problem of guessing where it's at. Uh, that's pretty cool um, But really this marker is super reliable. Um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of an ego, but it's pretty darn close as you're going to get to an Ego. Um, it shoots great. It's never really let me down. The only problem I've ever had with this marker is detents. And detents for Egos and E-Tex or, or any Planet Eclipse are pretty, pretty cheap. Um, so that's the only thing. It kind of eats and chews up some uh, detents. But other than that, it's great. It never has let me down. The board's pretty, uh, the board is pretty easy to navigate. It's got... Uh, semi-auto, uncapped semi, and PSP. Uh, it doesn't have NXL. At the time, NXL was full auto. Uh, but you can definitely uh, change the program mode of PSP to meet today's NXL, which is pretty much PSP. Uh, you know, you can do the one second timeout, re sustainability, or when it kicks in, sustains, all that stuff. Uh, I've used it many times on an airball field. It's never let me down. Uh, the thing that this gun is notorious for, though, is not just as reliability, but the shot signature. Uh, this gun's really loud. Um, I would have put it up there for Rainmaker. If you haven't ever heard of Rainmaker, uh, that's like almost as close as like shooting a real firearm. Almost those things are extremely loud. But um, with that being said, it is really loud for a paintball gun, and it does have some vibration to it. So the shot quality uh, isn't the greatest. Yeah, it's gonna rip some paint, and you know, do just fine, but it's a little, a little hard on that fragile paint. I, I don't think it's terrible on it, but it doesn't shoot as soft as like uh, some other guns in its uh, price range at the time. And it's definitely really loud. Um, it's definitely a pretty loud marker. You're gonna get some notice while shooting it. Um, but um, I mean, that's like all pretty much e -techs, you know, are like that. Even the newest one, e -tech 5, isn't near as loud as this, but it's still got quite a bit of a sound signature um and it does have some vibration to it but with that being said uh it does shoot great great um maintenance on it's super easy uh, you really don't have to maintain them very much i put cases upon cases through this gun over the years of me owning it um, it's never really ever let me down um I mean, maintenance is easy. I do it maybe like every five cases. I'll re-oil the bolt, and then I'll do the ram maybe every 10, 
the 15, sometimes maybe even a little bit longer than that, just oil it up. It, it does just fine. Redo the hyper red when stuff starts to come inconsistent or, um, I called it hyper reg, I'm sorry, uh, the HPR. Do the high pressure reg maybe once it starts to come inconsistent or like once a year, maybe twice a year, every six months if you play more often. Same way with the LPR. Uh, the LPR, you know, you're not really going to be able to tune this gun like a G6R or other uh, poppet guns. They recommend just two turns from flush and just leave it at that. You're not going to be able to get a, a super soft, quiet shot with this. Uh, it's just not what it is. Um, if you want to get a softer shot, start with the barrel. Get a better barrel. Don't go with carbon fiber because the carbon fiber allows more vibration in there. Um, if you want to maybe a die. Yeah, die or maybe the newer FL Planet Eclipse barrels might be able to give you that a uh, little bit quieter shot. Not by much. They say the best way is to get the hush bolt. Um, I don't know if I really agree with that. I'm not going to change anything on this because it shoots just fine the way it is. It shoots great. It's just got a little bit of a louder, rougher shot. But uh, you're not going to be like breaking paint like crazy on it. By any means, you're not. I just want to be shooting like five star paint through it or anything like that or pure evil through it you know if you're just going to be doing a walk on if you're playing a tournament with this gun you know you you might get away with it but you're going to get a couple of uh, barrel breaks with it no chops just some barrel breaks but again about the bolt they say the tech t uh hush bolt are really good for these to help quiet it down and you get a little bit more efficiency with it um i haven't done that because the gun to begin with is pretty darn efficient and uh I just don't see the value of making it a little bit quieter because it's still going to be, I still think it's going to be loud because it's an E-Tech. Um, I haven't seen an E-Tech that's really quiet. And when you're out there shooting, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, they're going to know where you're at, especially in the speedball field. If you're just ripping a stream through, they're going to know where you're at. So unless you're playing Sneaky Beaver with it, I just don't see the point of uh, upgrading anything. Um, I did buy the gun used, and it does, I think it has a, well, I know for a fact it has uh, laser blue eyes. It has blue laser eyes, and I wish I could turn them on if I had a battery in it. I don't know if that's aftermarket. Almost certain they are. Probably Virtue uh, laser eyes in there, which is cool. You know, it lights up blue right there. Pretty cool. Uh, other than that, gun stock. Um, a little bit about the ergonomics. It's definitely a, I'm not going to say a bigger gun, but it's definitely a beefier gun. Uh, I have pretty big hands. Uh, I wear a size large in gloves, so maybe normal for a male. I'm about six foot, so... But I'm a skinny guy. So, uh, but um, they say the back of the grip frame is kind of beefy, which you can tell. Yeah, it's definitely beefy. Um, and that could be a good thing or bad thing. Uh, the front of it is kind of beefy too. Sorry, got the low uh, battery indicator. The front uh, reg grip, or the reg itself, is kind of beefy too. Um, but I think it fits in my hands really well. I could definitely wrap my hands around it just fine if you have larger hands. It could be a problem if you have... Uh, Smaller hands, that is, but it's comfy. Um, pretty comfy. It's got more of a kind of a, I'm not saying like up feel to it, but it doesn't have a stretched out feeling. I mean, I got plenty of space right here for my hands. I don't have a problem there, but I really like uh, guns that are a little bit further stretched out. Uh, maybe just like an inch further stretched out or half an inch. Um, I got long arms. I mean, so uh, I like to kind of just have a gun that's kind of stretched out. It's easier to lane or easier for me just to point and shoot. Just comfortable overall. I don't have it so close to my face. Um, also about the trigger, uh, plenty of space right here to walk the trigger. Uh, no problems there. Um, but a little bit about the trigger. Um, the trigger isn't the greatest. Uh, it does the job though, so it's a trigger. But I'm not going to say it's like, oh my god, trigger. Um, it does have a little bit of side-to-side -side movement there. Not much but you can kind of see it. Um, and it is a little clanky. Uh, it's not smooth. I don't think it has any bearings in it, but it's a little clanky. It doesn't give you much feedback. So it's a little, a little clanky as you can hear. Um, it's not the worst trigger, but I'm not gonna say it's the best. Uh, but overall, the gun is just, it's a solid gun. Um, it's never gonna let you down. Uh, it's a knee tech, it's never gonna let you down. Uh, people are like, oh, it's so loud, just like shooting a cannon. Um, you just kind of get used to it though. When you're in the heat of the moment, um, you know, it's not going to bother you, honestly. Uh, it's easy to maintain. A little bit about the uh, oops on-off ASA. It just, just screws on and off. Pretty simple there. Proven design. You just screw it on. Screw it all the way in. You got air. It's pretty cool. Um, 
you know, at the time it was a really neat design because it didn't have anything hanging off on the sides. It was straight down the middle. It was easy to turn your tank on and off, easy to grip. Uh, but I think that's really about it. Um, this used to be my main marker I used until I picked up my most recent purchase. Well, I made two purchases uh, after this one, too. Yeah, it looked like I said three, two. Uh, but uh, I found another gun that I use, and I use this one just as a backup, which I don't use too often, but I mostly use it, or actually how it gets used the most is because my brother. When my brother comes to play paintball, I got extra masks and loaders for him and guns. He uses this one, and this one does great. It's a little loud, but uh, shoots great, especially with the aftermarket uh, barrel. If you purchase one of these, I definitely recommend getting a different barrel, better bore match, uh, like this uh, 685 shaft bore. You can pick anything. Uh, 685 is, is the way to go, in my opinion, with today's paint. You can't go wrong with that. Um, they are a little hard to find. Um, the shaft bore backs, so uh, you might have to buy it in a kit with two, with the Etha that came with the Etha. Like they had this aftermarket Etha barrel purchase for the shaft bores. It was recommended for the Ethas. I don't, I don't know why, but um, if you can find one of these, great. Um, if you want to keep the, you know, the cool uh, tip that it came with, uh, the shaft bore. But other than that, if you can get a freak kit, which I use, is even better, so you can match your paint. That's really going to be the best benefit you're going to get out of it. I really don't like the whole Tech T hush bolt. Um, I just don't think you get the bang in your buck for spending the extra 50, 44 bucks, whatever it costs. Uh, it does have a relief valve right here. Um, it's not super annoying, but it's in the way. Um, you know, it's still in the way. You still can feel when I, but I don't leave my hand right there, but it's definitely there. Um, you don't notice it in the field, but you know, it's there. Uh, I really just kind of hold the gun like that. Keep the thumb up on here. So I'm not really too bothered by it, but that is an option if someone, buy, you know, something, if someone's bothered by it. But other than that, uh, that is the E-Tech 4 LT. It's my uh, second purchase, and uh, it's a pretty good marker. I definitely recommend it to people. It's not going to let you down. I mean, Plenty of Clips is pretty dang reliable. But yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, shoot me out. Thank you.